Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Yesterday was Epiphany, so today is the Epiphany season, which we celebrate today. Uh, it is all about stars and light and uh, seeking God's guidance and uh, shining the light of God in the world. So that's what we're going to be talking about today and for the next few weeks. Uh, we will touch on the story of the wise men at the beginning, but we're more emphasizing the light of the world, Jesus. And then let us turn our hearts to worship God.
honor and delight. We rejoice that God welcomes us, welcomes all who we seek, all who try to find God are welcome in God's presence. And we at any time, at any place, are able to go into God's presence and ask whatever we need from God. So let us do so now. Let us turn to God asking forgiveness and guidance using the prayer that is printed. Together. God, the light in the darkness, we have seen the glimmer of your starlight beckoning to us, but we have turned away and followed other paths. We have heard the wisdom of prophets and sages, but we have ignored their call. We have experienced the glorious grace of our Savior, but we have neglected to tell the good news. Forgive us. God's grace, knowing God's grace, using the, the uh, litany that is printed in the bulletin. Even the darkness is not dark to God, and the night is as bright as the day. The God who promised never to leave us or forsake us has come to us in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, light of the world. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Our eyes have been opened by God's grace. Stuff, and the myrrh is the darker stuff. 
Uh, but I thought I would show you a couple of things. This is myrrh in the baggie there, and it's real myrrh. It's not as shiny as the one up there because it's not refined and purified yet. And, and I'll come that way and do it. And this is the frankincense, and it's uh, distilled all the way so you can smell it. Kind of a spicy smell. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go, ugh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that face. Then I should see that face. <laughs> you want some? <laughs> you want some of this? No, it's kind of, kind of spicy. Okay, so that is frankincense. And uh, it's very purified, so it smells like that. When it was in the rock form like that, they would burn it, or they would crush it and then burn it, or they would crush it and crush it and crush it, and that's how this came about. They crushed it and crushed it and crushed it. There's other scientific things that you do with it, but that's not important. And, uh, and then they would use the different things in different ways. So the gold was pretty, pretty clear. You could use that for jewelry or for coins, and so it was valuable and it was like money. Uh, the frankincense, it was used in worship. All the time. So, and there's still some places in the world where you smell, you go into the worship service, you go into the church or the sanctuary or the temple, and, it, and there's a strong smell. And there's, so they still use that as an incense. And then the murder was often used in medicine or in uh, even embalming and, and taking sure, making sure everything, somebody was healed or making sure somebody was ready for burial. So all those things, so they're bringing these three things to Jesus. Money, I get that. Yeah, because everybody can use money. But that was also meant to, to symbolize Jesus being the king, being royal. And so why do you think the, the stuff that they use in worship was brought to Jesus? It was a baby. So they brought these things that were used in worship because they knew what was coming. They knew that we all should worship Jesus. And the, and the myrrh, which was for healing and for burial, the healing was for us, talking about we should be healed. And the burial, theoretically, was for Jesus, that he, was, he died for our sins and rose for us. But it's also for us that Jesus took away our burial, that when we, even when we die, we're not, we're not gone. We're with Jesus and we're with God forever. And so that's what they were symbolizing. The goal was that Jesus is our king and, and we know Jesus is in charge of our lives. And the worship stuff was so we should worship Jesus. And the, and the medicine stuff was so that we can know Jesus can make everything right. Jesus can heal us and make everything right for us. So all of that is to say uh, there are, those are kind of strange gifts that we probably wouldn't bring to a baby. But we might bring to Jesus our worship and our asking for healing and things like that. Uh, and you have other gifts that you might bring to Jesus and bring to God. And so you adults are invited to think about the gifts that you bring to Jesus. And you can think about the ways that you can honor Jesus and worship Jesus in the, in the days and the weeks ahead. Okay? Let's say a prayer and you can go back Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for gifts. Help us to share. Amen. Thank you very much.
I'm here to read Matthew 2, 1 through 12, John 1 through 5, and uh, John 8 through 12. This is really nice for me because I've been studying the book of John, so I've been through uh, these two already. I'm happy to give these to you this morning. Uh, verses from Matthew, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Mag uh, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is a child who has been born of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are the, by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd of my Israel people. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. Then they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The word of the God, Lord. Thank you. Today we ask you to help us to see, to open our eyes, to help us to hear whatever message you would have us hear. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Yes. So as I said, yesterday was the November 6th. Uh, the official end of the 12 days of Christmas has passed and the beginning of a whole new season with the day of Epiphany. The season of Epiphany begins. Now Epiphany means... Uh, manis manifestation, as in God is manifest among us or seen among us, or revelation, as in God is revealed. Uh, revelation, um, God is revealed to us. So it is all about seeing God. Epiphany is all about seeing God. Uh, we see God. That's what the season is all, all about. Specifically, we see God through Jesus Christ. The, the light, sight, insight, all of these are important images during this season of Epiphany that for the next few weeks. Uh, and Epiphany extends until the beginning of Lent, which this year is Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, during the season of Epiphany, which we are now in, the church thinks about um, how God is revealed in the world, how we see God in the world and how we come to understand God, um, primarily, again, through Jesus Christ, but also other ways as well, and how we might 
share that light of God and of God's love in the world so that others might also see it and come to know Jesus. Uh, we think of the story of the visit of the Magi, the uh, kings, as a Christmas story, but uh, which closes off the narrative of that part, the birth of Jesus. But in the church uh, year, uh, and in many other parts of the world, Epiphany is actually uh, assigned, the uh, story of the Magi is, all, is assigned to Epiphany and is often later in the year, uh, following January 6th. And it is the first of the biblical stories that we examine and think about during the season of Epiphany. Uh, other stories go off uh, toward other ways that Jesus reveals God's love. <coughs> The story from Matthew and Visit of the Wise Men shows um, how Jesus extended and extends God's light in the world and God's love to everyone in the world, beginning with these foreigners who came to seek God in Jesus Christ. The star which guided the Magi to the Christ child has become a symbol of this season. A star uh, is often used during this season to remind us of the light of God. And uh, a star shining God's light in the world and guiding us or guiding anyone, guiding the way to God for anybody who wants to seek God. The readings from John develop that image of light and darkness, of God's light in Jesus Christ, light in the world. And uh, God's call to us to shine that light in the world. The idea of God as light is found throughout the Bible. It's not unique to Christianity. Uh, it, it is actually found in other traditions as well. It is especially found in the Psalms and in the prophets that God is light. The Gospel of John picks up on that uh, history of God being the light of the world and designates Jesus as the light of the world, develops that idea to describe Jesus who came into the world in flesh and blood and shows God's light in the world. Jesus helps us to see God. That's the bottom line. Jesus reveals God. Jesus reveals the truth of God's love in the world. Jesus is the light of God shining in the darkness of the world. All of these themes are amplified during this season. This time of year, January in our hemisphere, uh, is uh, as the sun goes down early and as it rises late, uh, as there is longer darkness in our days, it is very easy to see uh, the darkness of the world and the importance of light in our lives and in our world. In a symbolic sense, it is easy to understand the darkness as the absence of God, the absence of good, the absence of life, even. And unfortunately, that kind of darkness is also easy to see in our world. Uh, shootings, and war, and violence, and pain, and suffering, and all kinds of cruelty and chaos are obvious. Sometimes it is, it is very hard to find hope in the world and to concentrate on all that is good. Jesus reminds us that God is here. God is with us, even amid the darkness of the world. There is hope. There is light. There is possibility. Jesus reminds us to look for God and to look for the good that God has given and to share that light, to help others to see the light wherever possible, to shine the light of Jesus Christ, to shine the love of God, and to share that. Seeing the light of Christ is more than an attitude, more than just being positive. It is seeing the light of Christ is a way of living, opening our eyes to God, looking for God all the time, and in all places, seeing God, especially when things seem darkest. In fact, John describes it as living in Jesus, not just living with Jesus, but living inside Jesus. Jesus. And inside Jesus, we see God. It is as if we are no longer living in this world of darkness. 
Rather, we are living inside the life of Jesus, in the kingdom of God, where God rules, where God is in charge. We live in the light of God. We walk in the light of Jesus. We see the world as Jesus sees the world. Now, that doesn't mean we don't also see the war and the violence and the other difficulties and troubles. That doesn't mean that we don't sometimes feel pain and suffering and challenge. It means that because we know the light of Jesus, we see that there are answers to the darkness. We see that light can be added to the darkness, can shine over the darkness, and can overcome the darkness. We see that we are not alone in the darkness. There are ways to get through dark times. We know this. There are ways to shine the light in your life and in the life for others. There are ways to help other people find the good. You know that. You do that. There are ways to point people toward God's love. That, in a nutshell, is the call of Epiphany, to shine the light, to point other people toward God's love, to help other people see God and see good. That is the meaning of this season. Shine the light. Let your light shine. Your light of God shine in the world. The season of Epiphany this year is very short in 2024 because Easter comes very early. Uh, Lent comes very early this year. Epiphany is only six Sundays this year. Usually it is longer. Um, Epiphany is from now, or from yesterday, until February 14th, till Valentine's Day, and the Sunday is February 11th. Epiphany is, in fact, I counted, 40 days this year, which is a significant number. 40 days is often the time of preparation. We often think of that during Lent, 40 days of preparation. So this year, we have 40 days concentrating on shining the light of Jesus, focusing on the light of God, to look for the light of God in the world and to shine the light of God in the world. You have six weeks to shine the light of Jesus, to show God's love, to point people toward God. Of course, you can do that any time, and I hope you do, and I know you do. You should share God's love all the time, anytime you are able. But this year, if you accept the challenge of Epiphany this year, I invite you to, to be as intentional as you are able to be sometimes during Lent, and to, to take the next six weeks to intentionally shine the light of God. Focus on God. Make it a priority. Find concrete ways of shining the light of love. Now, of course, you can do that any way you think of, any way that you are able to share God's light in the world. Uh, but I'm going to suggest two possibilities, and you can think about what works for you or make up something that's totally different but works for you. First option, with 40 days, you could think about something to do every single day to shine the light of God's love. You might call it an act of kindness. Do something every day to shine the light of Jesus. That might be as simple as a good deed, or a kind word, or smiling at someone, or helping someone with a, with a chore that they might have, or saying a prayer for someone. Anything, but every single day, do something to shine God's light. You can do, do the same thing every single day, if that is what works for you. I'll find someone to smile at this day. I'll find someone to say a kind word to this day. Or you can mix it up and do 40 different things in the 40 different days. 40 acts of kindness that you can do daily from now until last Wednesday. Um, that's, again, Valentine's Day. But let me warn you, if you do this, be careful. If you look for an act of kindness every single day, Mm, it's contagious. If you consciously look for one good deed each day, you'll see more than one opportunity to do good each day, to shine God's light each day. You might find yourself doing more than one thing every single day to shine Christ's light. The other option is uh, instead of doing something daily, you could take it as a weekly challenge. A week 
uh, sometime during the six weeks, sometime during each week of the six weeks ahead. Uh, think of six projects that you can do, or six activities, or six ways of shining Christ's light and showing God's love during the world. In the world. Uh, then, do one thing every week, each week from now until Lent. Um, maybe pick a day that works for you, a Saturday or whatever day works for you. Or do something that takes longer than a day to do, and do that during each week of the six weeks. Um, basically, you can do anything you want to. You, you can decide which of those challenges work for you, or you can do both, or you can do something entirely different that I didn't think of or suggest, but that shines and shares God's light, Christ's light in the world during the season ahead. In order to share the light, think about it, in order to share the light of Jesus Christ, you have to see the light. So let's start there. If you don't know what to do, look for God. Seek God. See, find a way to see God every day. Um, open our eyes and see God and seek the presence of God in, in the world each day. The love of God all around us each day. Today, for instance, where do you see God? Right now, where do you see God in this room, in our world? Each day, how will you look for God? How will you seek God in the world? Um, you've already done a great job of it. You woke up. <laughs> you got here this morning. Thank you. Bless you. That is the first of the challenges. You are looking for God right now. That's why you're here. You probably also like the other people living there. That's okay you're with that. But uh, you are turning to the light right now. You are seeking God's presence right now. You came to worship. You share your gifts. You listen for God's word revealed. You're looking for God. You are seeking the light. In a few minutes, uh, you'll receive the gifts of God in communion. Uh, and that is one of the clearest ways of seeing God through Jesus Christ in the world. Uh, one of the clearest ways of seeking God is to come to the table of Jesus Christ and receive the gifts. We will see Jesus in the bread broken and in the cup, the juice poured out. We will know that God is with us in this sacrament. That is what it's about in communion. We'll know what God is in community, in connection, shared. We will feel God's love together. We will be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of God, so that we, we are able then, we are filled with that strength of God, so that we are able then to go out in that strength, in God's power, to share the light in the world. That is the first of our steps, receiving God's gifts, so that we might share God's gifts. All of this is to say that is the blessing of Epiphany. That is what we are looking for during this season. Seeking God, seeing God, and sharing God in the world. Uh, today, simply, receive the gift of God's light. Receive God's presence in your life and know that you are loved by the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the light of God's love, I invite you to stand and share what you believe, what we know to be true, and what we have shared for generations. We'll use the Apostle of the Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified.
remembering all of God's gifts to us so many, we are able to respond with joy and gratitude, giving our gifts of time, talent, prayer, and presence, opportunity, and property as well. So now during this time of offering, I invite you to give your tithes, your offerings, and your dedication to your life. Praying that you may make them holy, 
and make both them and us holy by the presence of your spirit. That the bread we break may be the bread of Christ's body broken. And the cup we bless and share may be the cup of Jesus' sacrifice for all. We thank you, God of light, for the glorious message that you bring light out of darkness, hope out of despair, resurrection out of defeat, and new life, even out of death. We look forward in hope in this new year, in this whole year ahead. And we look for miracles of grace to lead us in your way of love. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal crown. We pray in the name of Jesus, light of the world, who taught us to pray as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom and the power and the glory of forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this remembering me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you do this, whenever you drink this, do this remembering me. For every time we eat of this bread or drink of this cup, we proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ until Christ comes again in glory. These are indeed the gifts of God for all the people of God. We give thanks to God.
for all God's people. Let's pray. Eternal God, give us new life, constant love. We thank you for your presence with us always, for these symbols of your love given, nourished by this holy meal. Renew us in faith and hope that we may welcome Jesus and share the light of Jesus in the world. We pray all this in Jesus' name.